Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Jean-Baptiste. I'm the Managing Director of IFA Paris. And today, uh, we are going to cover our second workshop on personal and professional development. Um, this workshop is going to focus on how to craft an efficient and impactful resume and cover letter. And the person that is going to help us through that is Janie. Hi, Janie. Hi, good morning, everybody. Hello from New York City. <laughs> so for those of you that were not with us at the previous session, Janie is the president of Ginger Finds. Ginger Find is um, a headhunter, uh, headhunting agency specialized in executive searches for uh, C-suite positions in particular, um, focusing on fashion and luxury industries. So before we move on with the, the workshop, just a few little rules. Uh, as you can notice, I have muted all of you. Uh, just to make sure that everybody is able to uh, hear Janie while she give her she gives her advices. Now, if at any point uh, you want to speak to Janie, you can definitely interrupt her. Uh, so you can either raise your hand if your video is on, or you could also raise your hand digitally. So at the bottom of your screen on Zoom, you have an icon that looks like a smiley with a plus and it's titled Reactions. And if you would like to ask a question, please press that icon and select the raise your hand function so that I can tell Jamie that someone wants to ask a question and I will unmute your microphone and put the spotlight of the video on you. If some of you would rather send written messages, there is also a chat function um, and I will take care of it as well and I will relay your messages and your questions. So I think we are good, Janie, in terms of rules of engagement. <laughs> so shall we start the workshop? Yes, that'd be great. Thanks, JB. Perfect. Um, okay. so. I say this at the beginning of any conversation, webinar that we might do, session. Um, the more you are able and willing to jump in and participate, the better it is for everybody. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of watching TV. I'm a big fan of Netflix. However, watching me probably isn't as um, insightful or interesting or entertaining, shall we say, as watching something on TV. So I'm, I'm all for that, but much, much prefer everybody to be participating. Um, one of the things I recognize is that um, everybody will be at different places in, in regards to resumes and their questions. Um, some of you may be at the beginning of your career and perhaps have never written a resume before. Some of you may be more senior executives where you have had a resume for several years and maybe you're interested in upgrading it, taking it to the next level. Maybe you're on the call and you've been in, uh, on a certain uh, path with regard to your career and now it's time to look at doing something different and you're thinking about rewriting your resume to be consistent with that. So wherever you are, I want to know, I want you to know that you're welcome. Um, my job is to provide value here. So please interrupt and ask specific questions along the way. So on that note, I thought first off, I would um, just talk about resumes and CVs in, in general. Um, there's a school of thought that people, some people think that, or ask the question whether they're relevant um, and whether they're necessary anymore, um, which I always think is a really good question. And I always stop to think about the answer to that, but I always come back with the same answer effectively, which is, yes, they are. Um, and they are uh, relevant for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is that, of course, they are a great way to, um, to, to keep a, 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 a good, um, a track record of your history to date and what you've done and that's one way of, of, of relating to them but from my perspective there's an even more powerful way to relate to resumes and that's that they are a um, 
They are a process to be in where you stay connected to all your accomplishments and who you are as an individual. So last, last week, we actually did a webinar on your unique prop proposition, sorry, your un unique value proposition. Your resume is one expression for you to be able to write what you provide that's unique in, to an organization, um, to a team, and it's, 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 so it's very important that you have a resume. It's very important that you do the work on, the res on your resume. And I've had experiences where people understand the value of a res resume and then other, other people may not understand the importance of the resume. And just in that, it speaks volumes about who you are. So my, my advice to you is to really relate to your resume as being important for you. So the other thing I want to say about resumes is that there are two ways you can relate to them. You can relate to them as a list of what you've accomplished to date and or you can relate to them as a way of creating the future that you want to be in. What do I mean by that? So instead of writing a resume from the past, you write a resume from five or 10 years time, you write your resume from the future. Well, you know, you might ask the question, how do I know what my future is going to look like? Well, here's the point. You want to be in the driving seat of your career and your future. You want to spend time visualizing and thinking about where you would like to be in five or 10 years time or whatever timeline you choose. And then look back to today and write your resume as though it was already accomplished. It had already come to pass. It's a very different place to write your resume from. It takes you from writing a list of things that you've accomplished to date, to the present moment, to actually de designing your resume consistent with your commitment to where you want to be in the future. So food for thought there. Any, anyone got any questions about that? Because that, that, when I share that with people, and by the way, I write probably two or three resumes a week for executives. Um, I'm asked a lot for feedback on resume writing. So I have this conversation with people a lot and it requires some thinking. It requires really thinking about who you are, where you want to be, and then let's go to work on writing. So any so, questions? Yes. Yeah, Jamie question from the, the chat box, actually, uh, from uh, Beauty Streams. Uh, and the person is asking, what about if the route forward is possibly divergent? Great question. So what that says to me is um, that you want, you want to stay open to possibilities. You're not necessarily clear or have one track that you want to be be on or aim for, which is, might be the case for some people. So in, in your case, you want to stay open and create a big, big picture for the future that will allow for and include all kinds of eventualities and op opportunities. Personally, I'm a big fan of that. I, I believe that um, you know, the, the, the context we create, the bigger the context we create, the bigger we can hold lots of different possibilities. So think big, stay broad. Got it. Perfect. Thank you, Janie. Anybody else has another question? Ah, okay. So we have a question from Mary Beth, Mary Beth Sheridan. There you go. Uh, so would you like me to read your question, Mary Beth? Or, okay. Um, hi, also, uh, think about what is more relevant in today's market. For example, digital skills should be emphasized if you have them. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So there are certain key skills that are important, relevant, hot topics, um, sought after at the moment, of which digital marketing, e-commerce uh, are some are great examples of that. And you want to make sure that they are brought to the top of your resume versus being buried somewhere in the bottom. So a, a, a resume well written leaves the person that's reading it 
really clear who you are and what your skills are. They don't have to go looking for them. So you do want to be thinking about, you know, not only what it is you want to be doing, but also what you think the person you're going to be talking to is going to be looking for and bring it forward and highlight it. Yeah. Great. Anybody else has another question perhaps for Janie before we move forward? Okay, uh, I'm, I may have a question actually. <laughs> because you, you were saying that, um, you know, one has to write about their experience, his or her experiences as if they were already accomplished. Is that what you were saying? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so, so when you use this sort of perspective, I mean, you know, from a French speaker point of view, because English is not my native language, yes. how do you um, phrase the details of your missions? Would you start by using a verb plus ing, as in, you know, to show, I don't know, maybe more um, dynamism? Or do you use nouns or do you use the ed form of each word? I get a lot of these sort of questions from my students, so that's why I'm asking you. Fascinating question. And that's a question I've never actually thought about what I do, but I'm going to go over some um, examples that I've, specific resumes that I've worked on, and, and we can show the before and after. I, 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 and I clearly, you'll see, I have a preference. Um, I write it in the present because it's active. It's who I, it's, it's a statement who I am. Um, so let's, why don't we, um, if, if we can park that question, go yep. over the resumes and if, let's see, the, let's see what, what shows up there. But I really Sounds like good. that. Okay. So um, just, just if you don't mind, before we move on, because I, you know, while I was asking my question, I just got two interesting questions as well in the chat. Yes. So maybe I can ask them to you before, before we yeah. pull up the resumes. And by the way, uh, all the participants have the, the resumes and the cover letter. Uh, so it was sent to them this morning as well, the samples. Oh, fabulous. Um, so Davide is asking us, how do you explain a wide skill set? I'm a fashion designer with a preparation in marketing and digital and 3D design and VFX. But this often looks like I'm confused in my resume. How to avoid that? Great question. And I think you really want to think about what you want to lead with, Davide. Um, you want to be like, yes, you want to be clear about what you want to lead with. And then you bring everything else with you. It sounds to me like you're leading with being a fashion designer but you're a multifaceted fashion designer who's got a, sort of a wealth of experience and knowledge and expertise that you're bringing with you. I think um, without necessarily seeing your resume, um, it will come down to the choice of words you use and um, the, the choice of words you use, the order in which you use them, what you put first. Um, and I should say, if anybody has specific examples and they'd like me to, to look at their resume, I'm very happy to do that. And, um, you know, we can, we can get connected through LinkedIn and, you know, you can send and I can, and I can take a look. Yeah. And I think, you know, Mary Beth was, was actually giving a, an advice, a feedback because, you know, she, she was saying, perhaps you can also touch upon what I call a brief bio to include with your resume, which tells more of, a sto the, of the story of who you are. Yes. So I think it's quite important. It is. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got the resume, you've got the bio, you've got, and you've got the cover letter. Mm. And, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need all three. It's good to have all three ready, ready to go. Um, and to Mary Beth's point, a bio is much more of a story. It's probably no more than half a page. Um, and you can, you know, you, there's a bit more of a creative license, if you like, there, mm. bio. Um, there, yeah. there, there's just so many things that are said about, you know, how to construct a CV and how to structure it. And so I see these questions and I'm like, okay, these are the questions that I heard as well in the past. For example, uh, we have Andrea who's telling us we're constantly being told, oops, 
time. We're constantly being told that people uh, look at resumes for six seconds tops. It's hard to hear that and then take the resume as seriously as we should. But I mean, you know, the, these recruiters, uh, HR directors receive a lot of resume on a daily basis, don't they? So I think that relates back to the title of this workshop. It needs to be impactful. Yes, yes, it's a very good point. It, it, and it does raise the question, why bother? And um, to my point about you want to write your resume so that you love it. Mm -mm regardless of what you think, how impactful also you think it's going to be and who's going to see it. You do it for yourself. That's the most important thing. Um, and I, you know, I have, I've seen a lot of resumes. I actually take the time to look and read resumes and the ones that stick out are the ones that are well thought of. And I'll, I'll, as we go through some of the examples, you'll see. Um, both in terms of how they're written, but also in, in the design. And I will say this more and more i am opting for the prep my preference is a one page resume if you can do that and that is can be more challenging for people who perhaps had a, a longer career because there's more information but there is a way to take the risk and pare information down such that it's on one page because there is a limit we only have a limited amount of concentration span so if you can get things onto one page and it can be visually striking, you have got a much better um, chance of leaving an impression. Perfect. All right, thank you, Janie. So shall we uh, move ahead and uh, upload the resumes if you want, the sample ones? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So um, just so that I let all the participants know now, I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, so I think you should be able to share, to see it now. Can you confirm it? Yes. Okay, great. So here I have all the different files that were sent by Janie. So Janie, tell me which one you would like me to open first. Thank you, JB. The, the third one to the left. So original resume number one, 2019. Perfect. Thank you. There you go. Excellent. So I'm going to sort of give you a little bit of the story behind the resume when it came to me, first of all. So this resume uh, belonged to a senior executive um, at a very high level in a um, Italian retail fashion company based here in the US. One of the things that became apparent was, as I read through it, is that it actually, and it was five pages, as you will see, was that he clearly, he'd written it in Italian and then he'd done a Google Translate into English. So, you know, it, it had things that didn't make sense. You know, the English wasn't necessarily correct. Um, there were things that were repeating themselves. Um, you know, so no judgment, okay? He, he actually hadn't had to have a resume since his early days, you know, which was probably about 30 years ago. So, you know, it was like all the information that he could think of was in these five pages, and this is what he called his resume. So clearly, you know, he was appreciative of having some input and some, some help with this. Um, JB, if you can just stroll down so I can... Yep. Just, thank you, just prompt myself about anything else. Um, you know, you can see from this, it, it's a list. You know, it's not, it's not in, in bad, a bad shape or anything, but there's nothing particularly um sort of uh, inviting about it and also the companies that he i mean i've removed obviously things that you know it's all confidential so i've removed the companies but because he's he worked for several companies in italy i mean i'm british i live in in new york i'm familiar with a lot of companies but there were some companies on there i didn't i wasn't familiar with so one of the important things about this is when you write your resume you have to write it from the spec the perspective of the other people it's going to so we take for we take for granted that people understand and know our worlds you know so you want to bear that in mind so that when you write things you want to ask yourself will the person who's reading my resume know this company will they know you know that this company you know, was was bought out in this year or had this famous 
prominent uh, senior executive uh, be CEO at this point. So you want to be thinking about those things. Okay, so you're writing this about yourself, but it's from the perspective of uh, a complete stranger reading it. Um, okay, great. So if we can go to the, 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 the version of it once I finish working on it, JB. So that yes. is the final resume number one, 2020. So it's the one to the left. Thank you. This one. Yes, please. Great. Thank you. So this is what it looked like after I'd finished. So I took it from five pages to three pages and even three pages, you know, is a lot uh, today. But that said, it's consistent with someone with a 30 plus year career that really would be expected to show uh, some of his accomplishments and uh, experience in depth. So the first thing I did right at the top there is I sat with him and I interviewed him to pull out from him, from him, who he, is he? See, often what happens is we put in the first paragraph, which is often called the executive profile, a list of all we've accomplished. This really should be more of a story about who you are as a person, as a personality, what's important to you, what matters to you. And you'll see I pulled out the key key words there so that people know straight ahead straight away who he is and what he's looking for so he's a c-suite executive he has experience in textiles fashion eyewear shoes and accessories and the departments that he's been accountable for are retail wholesale and e-commerce and inside of that i've woven some key things that will start to have him stand out. One of which is the expression deeply rooted in Italian craftsmanship. That is one of the things that has him stand out. The fact that he's Italian and he has all this experience and where it comes from is textile mills, woolen, woven, high quality products that one might argue are sort of at risk of disappearing in a world that's becoming, has become more about fast fashion. So that, in, that there puts him in a certain category, which is one of quality. Then other key words in there are creative, entrepreneurial, passionate leader. So I needed to get this through as well. This man actually, in his spare time, loves baking bread. Now, am I going to put that on his resume? Probably not in this setting, but there's a way I wanted to bring that in. He's a very flamboyant personality. Um, and I translated that flamboyancy in the text that I chose for the subheadings and also his name at the top there. So it it's just says XXX, but there's a, there's a certain text that I decided to use that brought in a little bit of style and flair and creativity. And also then I chose a, a color which was consistent with the color he liked. Um, what else? So because he's Italian and he's looking for roles in the US with younger companies, what I wanted to do was add a little bit of color to some of the companies. So for example, underneath, let's see, um, professional experience, the first, the first professional experience, um, under the company and also as a board member, I put founded in 1818 as a family business. Under chief operating officer, I put a secondary classic American tailor clothing brand in the XX group, selling high quality made in the US. So again, I did that consistently through the resume because it told a story. And if you go to the bottom of the resume, you can, it starts to all run together and make sense. Because where he started off was in a fabric, fabric division. In fact, I left some of the company names in there. So again, the story of the craftsmanship is woven into the resume and also 
this guy has the he has the um, the, the experience and expertise of studying on the sort of technical science side of things. So he was he had a degree in electronic engineering whilst also working in a in the business in the fashion industry with his creative flair. So he had everything going on and my my job was to make sure all that sort of was woven together. Got it. Um, would you like to stop and perhaps get some questions, if there are any? Because I see that I have uh, someone requesting something on a chat. Um, okay, so it was, that there was a question about photos, actually. Do we include photo? Can we include photos on resume? But in the US, you're not supposed to include photos, right? I mean, who knows what you're supposed to do, not supposed to do. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I've seen both. I think it's fair to say mostly in the US you don't get photos mm. um, on resumes. I'm a definite yes for sure, put your photo on your LinkedIn profile. By the way, your resume and LinkedIn profile needs to be consistent. So you, you do a good job on your resume and you can literally cut and copy and paste the, the whatever you write in your resume onto your LinkedIn profile. So photograph, yes, on your LinkedIn profile. On your resume, I, I always say it's, it's down to one's personal choice. Mm, got it. Um, another question from uh, Lisa. Do you feel stronger about first person narratives or bullet points of accomplishments? That's a good question, actually. It is a good question. Um, and again, I, I really think it comes down to the style that you want mm. to, you know, who you are, what's your expression, you know, for, for a, a senior executive with 30 years, he, uh, wanting, he, would, he or she position, would position themselves probably with bullet points, is it succinct? You could make, take, make the argument, it's the language of business. Um, but if you're, you know, if you want to be more creative and put in the eye and, you know, tell your story, you know, which is more like a bio, I think that's fine too. It really depends. Mm. It depends on where you're at in your career, what you're going for, your audience, who you're reaching out to, the level and the position. And I think it goes back to uh, what you were saying uh, in terms of what you call the executive profile or some people call it the personal summary. Like, mm -hmm. and, and it also arches back to the workshop of last week, like really discovering what you can bring, who you are. So I did have a question myself on that, on that specific first part that is really important. So the, the CEO uh, had an interview with you and then, you know, you managed to craft this first part of the CV to be impactful and representative of who he is. But what if you're alone? How can you do it? I mean, is there some sort of perhaps brain, brainstorming technique where you write your name in the middle of a blank paper and you, know, you write any sort of word that relates to your personality and your professional career? Yeah, a great question. And I'm glad you asked it actually, because I would have forgotten to bring this in. Um, there are lots of different assessment tools out there in the market to help you discover who you are, so to speak. And, and you know, there'll be people who have done several of them and there'll be people who haven't done any of them. There's one that I highly recommend for people to do. And it's, it's done by, it's uh, called Gallup Strengths Finders. Gallup is a research, an American research poll company, very, very uh, high reputation, good reputation in what they do. Several years ago, they came up with this online assessment tool. So let's say about 100 questions, you go online, you answer the questions, um, and you don't have a lot of time to think about your answers. What, what they then send you is your top five strengths out of a possible 34 strengths. So it's all about strengths, not, not, not about weaknesses or gaps or areas you need to work on, it's all about strengths. So it comes back with a report of your top five strengths out of a possible 34. The chances of you having the same top five strengths in that same order is one in a, one in a million probability compared to somebody else. So you get your uniqueness very, very strongly. 
everybody I know who's aren't, who I've encouraged to do it has pretty much had the same reaction. Most of all, they, it's been like looking in a mirror and they've gone, wow, that's amazing how it was so spot on. And that's why I like it. And then there are things that they learned about themselves. So Gallup Strengths Finder 2.0, I think it's called. You can, you, can down, you can download it, do it online. Um, I've shared the URL on the chat box for excellent. everybody to have access to it. So that's, a, that's sort of something you can do on your own. Um, it's fun to do. It also leaves you with some exercises. And then another thing you can do, if you, you could actually take on interviewing people about how they see you. Mm. Interview, you know, three or four people that you know in different capacities, have some questions for them and ask them, you know, what they see to be your top strengths. What do they like about working with you? Mm. What are you known for? So you want to give it out to people around you for them to come back with feedback. Um, and then, you know, and then look at, look at the place to look also is what inspires you. Really what inspires you? What do you love? Um, I, you know, we have a couple of questions here from participants that I believe may be at, a, at an earlier stage in their job search because I'm, I'm reading about masters and undergraduate. So um, there's a case that's being brought up by Smruti um, in stating that, okay, when I'm applying for an internship and, you know, I, I, I just graduated or I need to complete an internship for my master and I don't have much experience, how do I build an interesting resume? Like, what can I, what can I focus on? What can I highlight? Yeah, very good. So, um, you, it, maybe you want to start off with a bio because you can tell more of a story. Um, and the, places, the place to look is, you know, what, what have you got involved in in your life? You know, it could be you, you were on the team in a, 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 in a, a sports team at school. Mm. It could be that, you know, you uh, were in a, you know, debating club, after school debating club. Um, you know, it could be you write about where you might have traveled, if you've done any traveling, whether it's, you know, in your own country or whether you've had the opportunity to travel further afield. Um, you, let's see. So it's really, and I know you've got to start somewhere and it's, it's, it can be hard about knowing where to start. Um, but also, so, so look at what's, you know, what you like doing. It could be what you like reading or studying or, you know, talk about the placements that you were in for your intern uh, experience. Um, uh, and so it's going to be more, you're going to bring out more of who you are as personality and as a person versus necessarily, you know, having lots of things that you've done at this point. Got it. Um, I mean, I receive a lot of question on the chat box. So again, mm -hmm. like, you know, very, uh, People are very passionate about this topic. Um, uh, okay, there was someone who was asking us, how should I handle very different jobs during university I did for paying the bills? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, they're mostly not necessary for a job in the fashion industry. I mean, they don't have a direct link. But, you know, during that time, I also had a lot of social and personal skills that do have a positive so actually the, the this participant was saying that during uh, his or her university time yes. he or she did a lot of uh, uh, part-time jobs you know yes. like to, to pay for their studies so yes. is this something that needs to be included in a resume yes. can can this person value and put into relief the skills achieved or should you just forego this part no the, everything and all and everything is totally relevant you know if i if i'm an if i'm an employer looking for looking for somebody i want to see that somebody has done all kinds of things i know for myself i did all kinds of things in my early days to get experience and there i promise you everything you've done is a transferable skills and the way where you want to look is you know um in the area of 
Did you have interaction with other people? Were you serving people? Were you taking, you know, like um, operating a, a cash or a, you know, taking payments for things? Were you, um, were you organizing visual displays? So you, you, you know, you were sort of getting the experience of um, your physical environment. Everything that we've ever done has transferable skills and they are all relevant. And yeah. that goes back to uh, the, the question that Ishita was asking, what can be included when you don't have a lot of experience? Actually, you have experience. You, you don't necessarily realize it, but everything that you do helps you gain more you know, mastery in, in specific skills and competencies. Exactly, exactly. Kenny had an interesting question. I'm going to unmute his microphone, actually, because I'm getting a little parched. I, I speak so much. <laughs> but then there was, uh, I, I think it goes um, sort of hand in hand with what uh, Viorica was asking. Viorica was asking, I'm an executive with 15 years of working experience, all in the U.S. and education. Uh, all in the US and in education. And I would like to move back to Europe where my family lives. Can you please speak about the differences in resume styles, US versus Europe? And the reason why I would like to unmute Kenny as well is because he was asking a question in regards with editing and layout. And that's, that could be one of the differences. So um, Kenny, I'm going to unmute your microphone. Here you go. Sure. Thanks. Uh, my question was, uh, hi, hi, Janie. Well, my question was um, in relation to the white space on a resume. So my question was speaking to like, you know, you tend to want to put a ton of information on there to convey your point to make sure that the recruiter or the person reviewing will see everything about you. But I also got some feedback before that less is more. And in this case, it might be best to kind of for sure pull back and to have a bit more white space on the resume, but highlight, of course, the key bullet points, because that draws interest to you, and then that could be a bigger chance of inviting you for a call or for a meeting. So I wanted to get your advice on what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of simplicity. I'm a big fan of less is more. Why say, you know, three sentences when you can say one? I'm a big fan of, of the, the aesthetic design um, um, and you know being creative with I mean even putting in graphic graphic designs we're working on a on one at the moment that is she's she's a senior executive uh, her resume is three pages at the moment we're going to take it down to one page we're also going to include a pie um, pie chart graph um, which sort of shows you know what a day in her life might look like and from a percentage wise. So, you know, the number of times, the amount of time, the percentage of time she spends with her family, you know, cooking and eating, which is one of her passions, sleeping and working, the whole thing. So um, something like that, you know, is very striking. Um, so I'm, I would say less is more and the white space is good. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's interesting that, you know, you're talking about doing it, doing a CV as a one pager, so to speak, because in France, recruiters are big fans of CVs that fit into one page. So that could also be one of the differences from, you know, an Anglo-Saxon perspective and a Francophone perspective as well. So US versus Europe. Yes. Yes. I don't know how is it in the UK, Jenny. One page, two pages. Um, I would say it's it's no more than two. There's definitely more, uh, a sort of a gathering train of thought similar to here about it being one page. Um, I mean, it's again, it comes down to again experience and the amount of information depending on the, the length of, of of somebody's career. But, uh, but it's definitely heading in the direction of less is more. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, just to get back to uh, what Viorica was asking, like you, you were talking about now a, a resume that you're working on with a very creative layout. So could it be, for example, that if you apply for a job in the fashion or in the luxury industry in the U.S. and then in Europe, 
they're also expecting different things from a layout. Maybe in the US, they will want to see a very creative layout, and maybe in Europe, they would be more conservative. I don't think it's that, that simple or straightforward, actually. Mm -hmm. I think the place to look is not at country, but at who it's going to. What right. might be the culture of that organization? So it boils down to research as well of the organization, and of the company. Does. It absolutely does, while staying true to who you are too. Got it. And one last question before we move on from a, a beauty stream, and that was the uh, coming as a sort of the, 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 the opposite of what Kenny was saying. Uh, conversely, should one edit one's experience so that one doesn't look too old? Uh, including taking the date of the university. Um, I again, I, it's it that is a trend that's happening. So removing of dates uh, for early career, whether it's education or whether it's early work experience, um, that's definitely a trend. Um, you, you know, you could argue, you could argue the, the the case. You know, how relevant is is it the dates and time? We're certainly at the moment. I would say you know, in a pivotal time in history, you know, for everybody in terms of, and including work. So, you know, what relevance does periods of time have? What really matters is who one is today and what one brings to the table today. So, I mean, I don't think there's a hard, like everything really, there's no hard and fast rule. It's whatever you want to do, but I definitely think it's certainly acceptable to do that got it um and then be, before we move on to uh, maybe another example of resumes yes. um that, that there was a technical question there and i think it's interesting to share how concerned should we be about the ats system and making sure our resume gets through i heard any images might kick it out yes i've heard that too um I think, you know, for something like that, when you're sort of dealing with the unknown, I would play it on the safer side, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So have a copy of a resume that was perhaps more straightforward, one page more straightforward, and a copy of a resume that perhaps, you know, is more creative and dynamic. Got and it. And you can actually submit both, maybe, you know? Jamie, in the, in the samples that we've shared, are there resumes that are on one page? Yes. Okay, great. Because we had some questions about uh, uh, key things to consider to make a resume a one pager. So maybe we, we can share these ones. Okay, let's go straight to that. Great. Yep. Can you see my screen? I can. So if you go to resume original, so the far right, please. Yep. Is okay. This one? Again, it just happens to be this was an, a, a, another Italian uh, young woman um, uh, executive, worked at some great luxury companies, um, and again, had been in a company for a substantial amount of time, so hadn't really needed, well, hadn't needed to really look at her resume. So, you know, she just sent it me as, as was. Um, and if you just scroll down, JB, that would be great. You know, pretty pretty straightforward. She had some good, really good experience. Um, and it was on three pages. Um, you know, nicely sort of listed. Um, but again, not very sort of appealing three pages, actually four pages on this particular thing. So, so we went to work on that. And let's just go straight to the um, so an Italian young woman living in yeah, the next one to the left of it, thank you. Um, living in New York. So we got that I got this onto a one page. Um, now, admittedly, the text is small, okay, but I think that's worth it's worth going for a slightly smaller text size um, so you can get it all on one page. Uh, so again, I worked with her to pull out 
what, a, a, a paragraph there for her profile, so, so, so that it would tell her story. Um, and by the way, I always, when I do profiles, I always come from the perspective that the person is a leader. You know, it doesn't matter where you are in your career. You can, you can constitute yourself as a leader, a leader in your family, a leader in society, a leader in a team in some capacity, a leader in, your, in, your, in the company you work in, a leader in your, in your, in your student life. Um, so you'll see that word used a lot when I, when I write resumes. Um, so uh, on this particular one page, so by the way, I always take out, often people have their postal, or I don't know what in Europe, whether that's really the case, I don't think it is, but in the US they tend to put their mailing address there, where the, the place where they live, and I take that out. The only information you need is email, uh, telephone number, and your LinkedIn profile, I would suggest. Um, or, and or you know other social media handles um, also and a website if you have a website um, so we've got skills on here education and training community involvement I think this is um, something to take note of um, and it's if you're not currently doing something where you're participating in the community in some capacity or other. I mean, for a lot of senior executives, they might be board members or they may have some advisory role in some capacity. You want, if, you, if that's not something that's on your radar, you want to be thinking about it now because it speaks volumes about who you are as a sort of a holistic, rounded person, um, uh, you know, as, uh, and, and, and it's good to, good to put on, on your resume. Um, and then in order to get all her experience on one page, you know, there were things that we needed to remove. Um, if you could just scroll up again, uh, JB, that'd be great. Just so I could look from the top. So I got it to four bullet points pretty much for each role. Whereas before it was sort of, you know, more than that or less than that. I like to have consistency across the different roles as well to sort of from a, an aesthetic perspective to sort of balance things out. Um, what else can I say about this? Are there any questions really? Because we, we did, we were able to get everything on this, it was just a case of taking out some of the things. Um, I, do, I do have a question actually yeah. about uh, formats of resumes. Uh, and I don't know if, if my English is correct because that will be a direct translation from French. So help me out on that. Um, but th there are two types of resumes, right? You have functional ones and you have chronological ones, isn't it? So is that correct? Say more about that. Well, yeah, good. Uh, so, yeah, in business school, we we had uh, we did have a workshop about resume writing, and so we were taught to write two different types of resumes. Uh, one is called chronological, and so it means that you always start with you know your most recent experiences, and then you go back in terms of chronology. Yes. Um, uh, functional versus narrative resumes. Thank you, Beauty Stream. Uh, and then, so the other one is functional, so it relates really with the functions, the skills, and um, so could, could it be that if you want really to have an impactful one pager as a resume, you would use more sort of functional structure? Um, I would suggest so, because the first off, people want to know if you can do the job. Got it. Can you do the job? Second thing would be, is this person a fit culturally? Culturally from a you know, personality perspective, like that. Got it. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we have three questions here. Um, Susan is, is uh, asking us about the ATS system, right? Or the, the tracking system. Uh, would a one-page resume format work on the uh, applicant tracking system? Sorry, ask the question again, just so I'm clear. Well, Susan was asking if the, the one-page resume 
yes. that format, would it work for uh, ATS? Like, would it be recognized, basically? Recognized from the perspective of... From the, perf the perspective of the system, you know, the ATS system I, that... I got it, I got it. Um, yes. Okay, yes. perfect. Yes. Um, Simarpal is telling us that um, the, the job that Simarpal is applying for, or the job market, is bilingual. So, would you recommend a bilingual resume or two separate resumes for each language? Mm, great question. Um, I would probably do two separate resumes. I don't know yep. that there's a right answer for that, but I, I, would do, I would do two separate ones. Got it. Yeah. Well, um, I'm be thinking from what's going to make the person who it's going to be in front of life the easiest. Got it. I'm, I'm going to get to Kenny afterwards and I'm going to unmute him because he has another question to ask. But there's, there's here a question from Sean and, you know, it takes me back to my philosophy class when I was 18. So, and I, I think it's an interesting question. Um, what are your thoughts on including an interest section on a resume? For example, passionate about innovation, art, scuba diving. Yes, yes, and yes. Great. I was, <laughs> I was thinking it takes me back to my philosophy classes because uh, in preparatory class, one of our topic was passion. And our philosophy teacher was telling us passion is exclusive. You only have one. But then if you write, yep. But then if you write uh, about your interests in a resume, like for example, traveling, it would be interesting to understand, you know, how traveling is unique to you. Like, you know, how do you, how do you travel, for That's example? True. Why do you travel? Correct. Yeah. So Kenny, as promised, I am unmuting you. Go ahead. Thanks again. I thought I'd give you another break from asking, asking all the questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, one question that I have is in regards to experience over 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years of experience, I noticed in a couple of the resume examples that you made a point to make sure to get all of that experience in. But I wonder if it is still necessary to highlight the experience from like past 15 years ago or past 10 years ago, even because in the fashion industry, the relevance is now. So yes, that experience is valuable, but I don't know about the relevance to the now for business. So I just wonder what your thoughts are on how much emphasis should be put on that experience that is past, let's say 10 years ago. Yeah, very good. So the other resume that actually I had lined up to share with you, but you will have seen anyway, was a, a, I think a three page, we took it to two page. And the, the, the early experience, uh, the young girl started off, the young woman started off at, um, I think in, in sort of financial services company. She ended up in fashion, but she had that data analytic experience from the financial services company. I put, I didn't go into all that she was accountable for in those, the first three roles in her career. I just put the, the company, the title, the dates, and then actually I put it to one side. So I, 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 I had sort of two, two pieces. I don't know if you can understand this as I sort of demonstrate with my hands here, but two sides to the resume. So down one side was education, skills, uh, executive profile. And then right at the bottom of that were the, was the, early, the three early companies where she started her career just the company names, the date, and the title. And then on the other side of the resume was everything else. And I, I it probably started from memory from sort of the last 10 years. Does that make sense? Does that, did I explain that? Okay. Yeah, you did. you did. I guess I'm wondering, does that experience need to be there at all? Yeah, it's for some people, perhaps not. I think it's, it doesn't harm because especially if you see something that's relevant in there. So like I said, for her, what I saw that was relevant was her data analytics, financial, 
experience that supported her to become the president or the SVP of wherever she is now. But again, I didn't need to go into what she was accountable for because it was 10 plus years ago. Got it, thank you. But it's a good question. You know, at some point you have to kind of look and see what's most important here, getting everything on one page or getting everything, everything on, on the resume. And I think my, my choice would be getting everything on one page. So if it means letting go of some stuff, yes. Thank you, Janie. And uh, well, dear guest, dear Janie, it's 3.59 in Paris now. So it means it's 9.59 in New York. This session has gone so fast. A lot of people had a lot of questions. Uh, and Janie, you were amazing in, in giving feedback in terms of resume structure. Uh, and I believe, um, you know, we, we do have a workshop next Friday that will deal with LinkedIn profiles. So there is a connection here, of, obviously, between the, the CVs and the LinkedIn profile. So uh, I invite everybody to, uh, to connect with us again next Friday. Um, and what, what you have done here, Jamie, actually, is something that you will be doing uh, in the program that you know, we have co-created uh, between IFA Paris and Ginger Finds because it ends with uh, a day where you're actually allocating 30 minutes to all the participants to review their CVs, right? Yeah. So um, I will follow up with an email to uh, uh, all our guests here. Uh, with a, a WeTransfer link so that you can have the, the video and you can replay it as well. And I will also include a, uh, a link to our um, uh, program that is advertised on Eventbrite so that you, know, you can have a look at it and the, the different participants that will be included in the program, lots of exciting guests from Fenty, from Bain Consulting, from Reformation, American Eagle, you know, there are so many that I don't, really, I don't even remember how many we have lined up, but um, I will definitely send it over to everybody. Uh, and then, well, thank you very much, Janie. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending um, yes. and wishing you a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank for you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.